Okay, we can begin. All right. So good afternoon. Welcome to the update on coronavirus in the country and the various response measures we are deploying as at 8th April 2020. Fellow Kenyans, welcome to our daily briefing on the status of coronavirus in the country. On the day we announced to the country the confirmation of the first coronavirus case in Kenya, we implored the country to shift gears with regard to our lifestyles and behavior. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, we have repeated these measures every single day and asked you to embrace them for our collective good. These measures include regular and thorough washing of hands with soap and water and running water or use of alcohol-based hand sanitizers, maintaining of social distance of at least one meter between each other, maintaining good respiratory hygiene by covering the mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing, staying at home whenever you feel unwell with symptoms like fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing, and utilizing our 719 call center number, masking oneself with appropriate masks whenever in public spaces, and correctly disposing the masks. Together with our constant messaging and regular briefings, we have rolled out a broad range of initiatives to stem the spread of the virus. The initiatives have been rolled out under the one government approach, including a cross-section of ministries, departments, and agencies. We have also worked with our development partners, county governments, private sector, and people who have extended their goodwill to prevent the further spread of this virus. Towards this end, we are working up to scale up the various interventions that we have. We are working to scale up availability of personal protective equipment to enhance our capacity to be able to combat this virus and to protect our health workers and medical staff. We continue to train the different cadres of personnel to be able to handle the various aspects in terms of dealing with this global pandemic. In collaboration with other government agencies, departments and institutions, we have enhanced the country's capacity to mass produce hand sanitizers and the distribution of the same is ongoing. We have also continued to issue various interventions including the presidential directive on the countrywide curfew, cessation of mass gatherings amongst others, and all these interventions, my fellow Kenyans, have grown a great mile in helping us fight against this virus. Our dedicated health workers and medical staff have been of tremendous help in the country's efforts to stem the spread of this virus. Together with measures taken so far to enhance their capacity and protect them, we are hiring 500 more doctors to help us combat this menace. In terms of our local supply, should we extend the current production capacity we have of our medical workers in the country, we shall go an extra mile to protect Kenyans by seeking collaboration also with inter in our international partners to be able to have the right number of health personnel that we require. We do appreciate the risks placed to our health workers and we have gone ahead to set up separate isolation and quarantine centers for our health workers and medical staff. I would like to thank Kenyans who have taken it in their stride to supplement the government's efforts. From the media, yourselves who are here today, who have continued to disseminate information to our people, to the various volunteers who have taken their time to sensitize the public on how to keep safe during this period, to our innovators and our entrepreneurs who are pulling all stops to design appropriate masks, to put in place hand washing facilities, and to be able to use their various platforms in disseminating anti-coronavirus mitigation messages. We really do appreciate all of you and we thank you. For our corporates, I'm pleased to announce today that Safaricom PLC has offered us the utilization of their more than 175,000 agents across the country to provide a logistic and distribution system for us. And as we continue, we shall appraise you of how that will work. I'm also pleased to announce that Kenya Prisons has agreed to engage and to help us in supplying and in making uh, additional face masks. I would like to encourage 
institutions and cooperations in Kenya to continue lending a, help, a helping hand as we fight this epic fight. In this same vein, I'd like to make a special plea for those who are in possession of oxygen cylinders that are not in use, kindly avail these cylinders to us. We do require these cylinders as they aid in boosting our capacity to be able to be serving our patients and especially our critical care patients who may require oxygen supplementation. Ladies and gentlemen, this disease has shown itself to be blind to our creed, our status, our color, our age, and I dare say even our height. And it is for this reason we are calling for one for all approach as we try to protect ourselves and our country. More than ever before, we need, to look, we need to drop all our titles, our beliefs, our status, our age, and recognize that we need to fight this menace together. We do need to remember, fellow Kenyans, that this is a public health issue that we are dealing with. And therefore, in this regard, all private testing facilities as a matter of law and invoking the Public Health Act are required to share their results with the Ministry of Health for the purposes of monitoring this situation and ensuring that the proper notification is done in accordance with international health regulations. In addition to the previous measures that we've taken in place, we are adding on a new measure today. Starting today, all salon and barbershop operators must wear face masks while attending to their clients. Further to this, we shall be giving further instructions on how you restrict um, the number of clients you have in a salon to avoid the crowding in our salons and barbershops. We must also ensure that our salons and barbershops have hand sanitizers and their clients actually maintain social distancing and they practice basic hygiene in their operations. Fellow Kenyans, in the last 24 hours, we have tested a total of 305 samples, out of which seven people have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. All the seven are Kenyans. Four of them have a travel history, one from Congo, one from the UK, and two from the USA. In terms of distribution per their counties, we have five of these cases having been tested in Nairobi, one in Mombasa and one in Wasingishu. Two of the cases emanated from our mandatory quarantine facilities, while five were picked up by our surveillance teams. This now brings the total number of those who have tested positive for the disease in the country to 179. In terms of age breakdown, of all our 179 cases, three of these cases are below 15 years of age, 49 of these cases are between 15 to 29 years of age. 114 of these cases are between 30 to 59 years, while those above 60 are 13. And fellow Kenyans, if you'll allow me to really emphasize on this, when we look at our age distribution, this coronavirus disease is actually affecting the more productive members of our society. You can see, like I've said, only 13 are above 60. And therefore, a large majority of the population falls below this, meaning we do need to take charge, we do need to observe the various interventions that we've put in place. The seven people have already been moved to isolation in various health facilities and contact tracing is ongoing. In terms of gender, four of the new cases are female, while three are male. With regard to contact tracing, a total of 2,004 persons have been monitored. Out of this, 1,426 have been discharged. 578 are currently on follow-up. To date, we've managed to test 5,278 samples from individuals. Now, in terms of severity, fellow Kenyans, when we break down our 179 cases, one of these cases is under critical care as we speak, and the rest, 178, have moderate to mild disease. However, we do have one piece of good news. One of the patients who was in critical care in one of the private facilities in the country has been discharged to the general ward today. This is a Kenyan who was in critical care, who was on ventilator support. He has now been taken off ventilator support and required to celebrate the various doctors who have been aiding in his recovery. Two additional cases have been discharged in the last 24 hours. I want to wish all the affected Kenyans a quick recovery and I thank you for your attention.
You can have questions now. My name is Kennedy Wiredi from NTV, and uh, there is the question of uh, you requesting that anybody else who tests must share results with government. Is this in relation to the case that we had in Parliament, whereby about 17 members of Parliament might have tested positive to this coronavirus? And number two, how are we handling the prisons that we have? Because there are concerns that the congestion there, or the, even the the status in which our prisons are, there's a probability of even this spread of this virus. More questions? Mm -hmm. um, Dr. from Standard News. Uh, my question is on the in quarantine. Uh, what criteria are you using um, to discharge those? Let me rephrase it. I'm still wrapping my head around uh, the criteria of. Uh, extending the quarantine because uh, I would expect that unless the people who've tested positive in those quarantine facilities know whom they've contacted, then those who are negative can proceed home to continue the isolation. And then those in isolation, what criteria is the Ministry of Health using to discharge people home uh, if it's the two tests with the two consecutive tests within 24 hours, are we then from your numbers uh, keeping people in hospital for longer than they should when they have mild conditions and therefore they are occupying bed space for potentially critically ill patients and they should probably go and nurse their illness from home. Thank you. One more. Mm -hmm. Just one more. One more. Well, Stephen Leto from Citizen TV. Uh, the government appears to be calling for support for those who are having free ventilators. According to your projection with the rising numbers of the COVID-19 positive cases in the country, how, what is our deficit as a country with regards to the ventilators in the, in the hospitals and the isolation right. centers? Right. I think I'll, I'll grab those questions um, and I'll ask um, the DG will jump in when he needs to. Um, with regard to the testing, um, it's important for us to um, ensure, because this is a public health matter, to ensure that indeed all labs who are conducting testing um, do follow the laid down protocols in terms of reporting any positive or negative cases that they may come in touch with. The ministry is aware, and we did uh, see the headlines reporting that um, there are cases, uh, positive cases of coronavirus in parliament. And what we have to say on this matter is that as it stands today and at this time, we have no formal official reporting of these cases to the Ministry of Health. And additionally, we are rolling out mass testing. And this mass testing will actually in include testing of the different institutions in the country. And at that time, we will then be able to relate to you what the situation may look like in parliament or in judiciary. But it's also important to note, even as we invoke the Public Health Act, we are taking seriously matters of confidentiality and ensuring that those, those principles that are governed in medicine are still adhered to. Um, with regards to the prisons, I think this is an issue that we've addressed previously. Um, the Cabinet Secretary uh, informed Kenyans that we are looking at new measures of um, ensuring that social distancing and hand washing uh, practices are maintained within prisons. Additionally, we've limited uh, you know, any, any visits in the prison areas. And as we go on, this is a matter that is being reviewed to be able to see how we can then provide much more impactful interventions in that space. Uh, with regard to uh, Dr. Masikori's question on quarantine issues and um, isolation, it's important to note, like we mentioned in our previous briefings, most of our positive cases are cases that are emanating from quarantine, and we do maintain that indeed the measure of putting in place mandatory quarantine has actually protected the 47 million Kenyans within the country. What, however, we are doing as we extend quarantine in different facilities is we are reviewing, we do have a set criteria where our field medical teams are employing an assessment tool to be able to determine which centers were able to adhere to the quarantine measures. Um, with regards to discharge and um, 
especially discharge from isolation or discharge from quarantine. As we roll out our mass testing um, intervention, it is likely that we may find many more Kenyans in the country who test positive. And so because of strained capacities in being able to put all these Kenyans in one place, one of the measures that we are looking to deploy within the coming weeks would be a home-based care protocol, where for mild cases we actually advocate for home-based care, and through our hotline our and our different support structures, we will be able to monitor these patients and ensure they actually observe good self-quarantine measures at home and I think this will be further articulated in the coming briefings in the in the coming weeks. The DG will add on onto the measures and the criteria being used in quarantine. Again, with regard to ventilators, it's important that we understand that a ventilator is just one piece of equipment that's required in ensuring that an ICU bed is able to offer support. And through the National Emergency Response Committee, we are engaging all our different partners in Kenya and across the world to ensure that we have a good supply of these machines. I would ask you to allow us to be able to brief you in the next briefing the status of our ventilators, the status of our ICU beds, what we have right now and what is in the pipeline. But I'd like to assure Kenyans, we are well seized of these issues and we are here to protect you and we are working hard to do that. DG? Thank you, Madam CS. Uh, just to add on to the isolation and quarantine facilities, as asked by my colleague, Dr. Masi Korir, is that uh, we looked at the various designated isolation and quarantine facilities, basically quarantine facilities, and looked at the proportion of people who tested positive from our testing at the various facilities. And uh, where we had significant number of people testing positive, it was our belief that there was local transmission of the disease, and therefore we treated that as an isolation center going forward. And uh, based on that, the day the positive cases were removed from the uh, quarantine site to the isolation or treatment centers became day zero for the rest of the people under quarantine. However, in conjunction with our case management team, we are reviewing this. And we are also looking at deploying testing on the 14th day or 15th day to be able to see how many of those people turn out negative in each case. We will allow them home as I reported even yesterday, in conjunction with the county health management teams to continue self-quarantine for an additional seven days. For those who test positive, of course, they will proceed to the isolation and treatment centers. And then uh, for the people who are in isolation, the release process is that you have, you must have two negative tests within 48 hours, not 24 hours. Within 48 hours. And that that is what we have deployed in all cases where we have released patients from the treatment centers. Good question, good question. Uh, we are developing guidelines for home-based care for COVID-19. And once we are through with the guidelines, we'll be able to quickly bring the county health management teams uh, up to up to speed so that we can be able to manage mild cases at home. And so far from the statistics that we have, majority of our cases have been mild to moderate. Yes, Nasibo. Mm -hmm. Now that, now that, now that we have stopped the travel, if someone dies, how we, uh, will they be allowed to take their persons to Bari? And that you facilitated, has the numbers changed in terms? We were, you said we we're expecting about a thousand more cases. Uh, what has changed, or what led to this decision? Or are we going to see more cases? And then in terms of, um, sorry, 
I think Nasebo, I'll take those two. Um, so with regards to uh, burials, um, I think that's a good question and this was emphasized uh, yesterday, but I'll go ahead and, and uh, emphasize once more. Uh, we do know that we do have Kenyans who have lost their loved ones in different uh, facilities. We do know and we do have accounts of people who require to be given their last rights. And what we are saying is that through the Ministry of Interior, should you be one of the families who is undergoing this uh, tormentous uh, task right now, you should apply, uh, get your death permit as the usual process, and then this will then be then communicated to the Ministry of Interior, and you will be able to get your pass, and you'll be able to proceed and, and uh, give your last rights to your loved ones. So that is a process that is there, and what we will be doing through the MOH Twitter website, we'll be able to share a circular on this, and Kenyans will be able to know how to go through that process, those who are afflicted. Uh, with regards to our epidemiological model, um, it's important to know that we actually have um, a large team of scientists, epidemiologists, uh, who are working hand in hand with the WHO, Africa CDC, uh, CDC, uh, Beyond Africa CDC, and different other organizations, um, including Kemri Welcome Trust, who have shared with us uh, their different models, and the models stand as was articulated in the, by the DG a few weeks ago. Now, right now, today we announced we have 179 cases, and for that we should uh, be grateful. However, what we do see coming in the days ahead is as we deploy our mass testing using rapid testing, we will actually see the prevalence go up. So this is our wait and watch and see situation. We are in unfamiliar territories but our models still stand and within the two, three coming weeks we'll be able to confirm this with the rapid testing that we are deploying. Asante me. Allow me. So, Dr. Masi Korir, um, who was a classmate of mine, if I should add, uh, when do we expect our home-based care protocols? I'm aware that the Technical COVID Task Force has actually um, looked at the protocols and put them together. What we are doing in the next 24 hours is validating these protocols with WHO and CDC, reviewing these protocols and getting our sociologists to work with us. As you appreciate, home-based care will include an intervention where we have the sociologists do um, home assessments to ensure that your home is actually viable for of self-quarantine. So within the next 24 hours, we'll have those ready for you. Asante.